Hi everyone, it's Katrina, the giant anaconda. In the 19th century, the great English explorer Percy H. Fawcett, the one looking for the lost city of Z, described a giant anaconda living in the Amazon jungle. He claimed to see a massive prehistoric snake over 40 feet long and no less than a foot in diameter. That would make it much larger than any snake living today and closer to the prehistoric titanoboa that lived in South America millions of years ago. Percy was a famous explorer of the Amazon who went in search of the lost city of Z and disappeared in 1925 with his son Jack. He strongly believed there was a lost city in the jungle but died trying to find it. Hundreds of others also died while trying to find him. But he wasn't the only one who allegedly saw this giant snake. The locals call it Yakumama, which means mother of water. Other early explorers also described seeing a gigantic serpent slithering through the Amazon, normally in the Amazon river basin. Some say it's 40 feet, and some say it's over 100 feet. And even though people have seen it repeatedly throughout the centuries, and even though there are stories told by local tribes about this unusually large snake, nobody has ever successfully documented it. UFO Sightings Something strange was spotted by Google Maps that some people believe could be proof of an ancient UFO sticking out of the Amazon. It looks like there is a short line of lights on the trees in this aerial shot of Rondonia, a state in northwest Brazil. Even if you don't think it's a UFO, you have to agree that it looks pretty strange. The shape has been compared to a cigar, which is interesting because of reports of cigar-shaped alien ships over the years. It certainly hasn't been explained, so it's hard to say what this strange image is. Maybe the satellite caught a plane flying over at the same time? It's not the first time stories of UFOs have come from the Amazon, so the mystery continues. Forest Islands The earliest human inhabitants of the great Amazon jungle created thousands of man-made islands. They built artificial pieces of land in the forest, which they used to tame the wild plants of the jungle and create areas for crops. If you had told this to European explorers and scientists 100 years ago, they wouldn't have believed it. This most recent discovery has added to the growing list of evidence that people in the area had a massive impact on the land. When humans arrived in the Amazon roughly 10,000 years ago, they completely transformed the landscape. Specifically, they used these mysterious forest islands to cultivate manioc and squash. So far, scientists have identified 4,700 forest islands in northern Bolivia. The weather here is quite extreme. From December to March, everything is soaked and the entire area floods. Whereas from July to October, this part of the jungle is extremely dry. These artificial islands were made by heaping mounds of dirt up to a point where, in the wet season, they would be high above the floodwaters. They just made enormous mounds of soil that turned into islands when the rest of the flatland flooded. It was ingenious and an excellent way to keep the crops growing throughout the year. Without these artificial islands, water would have soaked everything and the squash wouldn't have grown. This discovery also proves that small communities in the Amazon shaped the jungle over 8,000 years earlier than previously thought. This discovery has completely changed history as it proves the Amazon was one of the earliest places for plant domestication in the entire world. The Strongest Hearts Researchers have found a primitive jungle tribe living in the heart of the Amazon to possess the best hearts in the world. As weird as that is to hear, it's true. The Tsimane people of Bolivia have been confirmed to have the best heart health of any group of human beings on Earth. There's just something about the jungle life that's given them almost superhuman hearts. According to the author of the study, Dr. Gregory Thomas, from the Memorial Care Heart and Vascular Institute in California, the Tsimanes' simplistic jungle existence has given them extraordinary protection against heart disease. Their active life of foraging for food in the rainforest has completely unclogged their arteries of any cholesterol plaque. That's the thing that increases the risk of heart attacks and strokes in most Americans. When the doctor performed CT scans on these people, he found hardened arteries to be five times less common than among U.S. adults. The Tsimane have an 85% chance of going through their whole life having no heart issues. 
The doctor said that even the oldest people in the tribe have the physiology of an average 20-year-old. The thing to understand here is that if you want to live a long and healthy life with better cholesterol and lower blood pressure, just forage for your food like an Amazonian. They are some of the healthiest people we have on the planet. Where is El Dorado? The lost city of El Dorado is allegedly hiding somewhere underneath the canopy of the Amazon, deep in the jungle where no one has been able to find it. Most historians have dismissed the story of El Dorado as a legend. Many explorers and conquistadors lost their lives trying to find it, after the success of finding so much gold with the Aztecs and the Incas. Some call it El Dorado and others the lost city of Z. The thing about El Dorado is that scientists in the 20th century didn't believe humans could live in the jungle, at least not in any meaningful way. 20th century scholars said large human settlements in the harsh conditions of the jungle was impossible. Maybe primitive tribes could live here, but not advanced societies. But now, satellite images have revealed over 200 massive earthworks in the upper Amazon basin. This is proof of what was once a great civilization. These earthworks are in the form of circles and squares and other geometric shapes, along with avenues, ditches, and enclosures. Some of them date back over 2,200 years. Others were made as recently as 800 years ago. Thanks to satellite imagery, scientists believe there could be over 2,000 structures hiding beneath the jungle here, the remains of lost cities that have been destroyed over time. Whoever lived here was brilliant, able to work with the different ecosystems of the Amazon and modify them to grow food and support thousands of people. It doesn't prove a great city of gold once existed, but it shows that the Amazon was once a bustling place home to a city that contained about 60,000 people. That's a higher population than most medieval European cities had. There were cities in the Amazon greater than those in Europe. The Harak Boot Face in an isolated part of the Peruvian Amazon, there is an ancient monument called the Harakbut face, or the Rostro Harakbut. The Harakbut are an indigenous group who have been living in this part of the Peruvian Amazon for hundreds of years. And the face carved into the rock here has been the stuff of legend for generations. Nobody knows if human hands actually made this mysterious face, or if it's a natural phenomenon. The face is in the Amaracadi Communal Reserve, which takes up over almost a million acres of the Harakbut tribe's ancestral homeland. What makes the face in the rock so enchanting is that it's perched over a rough section of the Amazon River. It looks as though it was put there on purpose to serve as a guardian and protect the place. There is no mistaking the fine lines for anything but a human face. It has a nose, eyes, a jutting brow, and even a bit of an underbite. It looks like a strong male warrior or the image of some great god. But like I mentioned, not even the local tribespeople know if their ancestors made the face or if it's just a freak creation of Mother Nature. And to make things even more mysterious, there are supposedly more of these faces throughout the region. But so far, nobody has ever seen them. Jungle Shaped by Humans We already know that Amazonians have made massive cities in the jungle, and we also know they made huge artificial islands to combat flooding to grow crops all year. But there is another secret in the Amazon that scientists are only now understanding. For a long time, scientists agreed that the tribes of the Amazon lived peacefully with nature. Nobody thought they grew crops, cut down large numbers of trees, or did anything to disrupt the natural order. But that may not be the case. Ecologist Hans Terstege and his colleagues recently did an inventory of the tremendous diversity of trees in the Amazon. They looked at 1,170 plots of land, very far from any currently inhabited areas. They could identify 16,000 different species of trees. But what they noticed was that even though the diversity was quite large, half the total trees made up only 1% of the total species. What does this mean? It shows definitive proof that Amazonians were domesticating the species of trees that they liked. They were clearing land, cutting down the natural trees, and planting the ones that they chose. Even though there are 16,000 different species, the bulk of the species were Amazon tree grape, Brazil nut, and ice cream bean trees. Ancient Amazonians were not as passive with the land as most people think. They cleared huge parts of the forest, 
and they did it to plant trees that gave them more food. Alien in the Forest Someone recently captured something quite unbelievable on video in the Amazon jungle. And let me warn you, what you're about to hear is out of this world. A pair of British tourists vacationing in a remote region of the Amazon filmed what appears to be an extraterrestrial visitor. While filming some children in an isolated Brazilian village, these tourists accidentally captured a scene straight out of M. Night Shyamalan's Signs with Mel Gibson. In the video, clear as day, hiding in the bushes on the outskirts, you can see a small gray figure. This figure looks exactly like you would expect an alien from a spaceship to look. And to make things even weirder, about 20 feet behind the alien is a bizarre glowing blue light that appears to be following it. Nobody's been able to verify what's in this video. Most logical people have dismissed it as a hoax. Others believe it is a confirmation of alien life. It's hard to say why exactly an alien would creep through the bushes outside an isolated Amazonian village. Do you think the footage of this jungle alien is real? Or is it just another hoax? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Ancient Geoglyphs The geoglyphs of Acre were uncovered deep in the Amazon rainforest. According to researchers from Sao Paulo University in Brazil, people once used these strange geometrical earthworks as ritual communication spaces. The geoglyphs compose over 450 mysterious earthworks scattered throughout the Brazilian state of Acre. They form fairly simple geometric patterns. I'm talking about squares, circles, octagons, that sort of thing. Most are about 13 feet deep, and scientists say Amazonian tribes created them starting in 1000 BC. That's about 3000 years ago. And although the local Amazonians have forgotten their purpose, they haven't forgotten their importance. Local tribes continue to guard these earthwork sites as sacred places. The exact purpose of these strange earthworks may be unknown, but we have a pretty good idea of what they used them for. They were almost certainly ritual spaces. Members of the community probably gathered here to watch shamans communicate with ancestral spirits, the stars themselves, and the spirits of the jungle animals. These people believed human life was intertwined with natural life, with everything from the ants to the monkeys to the cosmos themselves. Cosmic Villages Researchers fired billions of lasers from a helicopter cruising over the top of the Brazilian Amazon. These lasers were used to look for lost Amazonian settlements and other potential structures under the jungle. And they didn't disappoint. Researchers could use their laser technology to identify about 35 abandoned villages. These villages were constructed between 1300 and 1700 AD, making them relatively recent. But the cool part is that they were laid out in a pattern meant to mimic the cosmos. It's incredible to see that people considered primitive by outsiders designed their cities to look like what they saw in the heavens. Each village has an almost identical layout. There are elongated mounds around a central plaza, looking kind of like the marks on a clock. But looking at the villages from above, they look like the rays of the sun. And the similarities continue. Each village has a diameter of about 282 feet. Each village had two primary roads cutting through them, with smaller roads leading to nearby bodies of water. Plus, each of these identical villages was only about three miles from the next and those main roads cutting through them connected each village to the other, forming a network of villages all connected by roads through the jungle. When looking at all of these villages from above, they represent the cosmos. The people here were so knowledgeable, they were able to replicate the stars and celestial bodies of the night sky. The Australian Connection In a bizarre and shocking new study, Researchers have connected the first Amazonian tribes to the indigenous inhabitants of Australia. The genetic analysis could shatter everything we thought we knew about human habitation in the Americas. Rather than the Amazon being populated by people who moved out of Siberia into North America and then down into South America, it may have been Australians. The thing is that 15,000 years ago, there was a narrow land bridge called Beringia that connected Alaska to Siberia. The agreed-upon consensus for years has been that a significant group migrated into North America, and they were the ancestors of every person on the two continents for the next 15,000 years. 
Seeing as DNA directly links the Native American population of South America to the indigenous people of Australia, this clearly can't be the case. It looks like the Eurasians moved from Siberia into North America, while people from Australia and New Guinea moved across the sea into South America. Two distinctly different migration groups from two very different parts of the world. The big mystery now is figuring out how this happened. The Australians would have had to cross the ocean to reach the jungle or walk across a previously unknown bridge that crossed the entire ocean. First War Ever In 2014, a new analysis was done on a set of human remains that date back 13,000 years. They were discovered on the bank of the Nile River in northern Sudan in the middle of the desert. The new analysis shows that these people were victims of extremely violent deaths. Researchers believe they may have participated in the very first war between Homo sapiens in Africa. These human remains are direct evidence of the oldest known armed conflict. The ancient bones were first discovered in 1964 by the American archaeologist Fred Wendorf, uncovered at a prehistoric cemetery in Jebel Sahaba. This is the oldest burial ground ever discovered in the Nile Valley. There were 61 sets of remains found there, all of them shipped to the British Museum for study. The most recent analysis of the bones has shown arrow impact marks and scrapes on the bones from where they had been hit with arrowheads. Many of the people appear to have been killed by enemy archers. 45% of those in the cemetery died from major violence. Two of the men were even buried in a shallow grave with the remains of the weapons that killed them, decayed to nothing more but scraps of flint. Analysis has shown that the victims were part of a general sub-Saharan population. These are the ancestors of modern-day Africans. The remains were found nearby of another group of a different population, more closely related to a mixture of North Africans and Europeans. When all of this information is put together, it shows the very first war was fought between two different groups of human beings. Chunk of Protoplanet In the spring of 2020, an unbelievable relic was pulled out of a remote region of the Sahara Desert. The artifact is a very rare piece of an embryonic planet that existed before Earth was ever born. An embryonic planet is an ancient protoplanet that was the building block for a larger planet around the beginning of the time our solar system was formed. This is where things get complicated. The artifact is known as EC002, a meteorite that was forged inside the crust of a small celestial body a very long time ago. It's the oldest known piece of foreign space rock that's ever been found on Earth. Professor of Geochemistry Jean-Alix Barat and his team were able to date the rock at 4.566 billion years old. The Earth itself didn't even form for several million years after this rock was created. It was part of a protoplanet that was absorbed into a larger celestial body that then became a planet or was blasted into pieces by a collision out in space. How the ancient piece of protoplanet came to be lying on the surface of the Sahara Desert is something scientists still don't know. Nobody has any idea how long it's been on our planet or if it's been floating around in space for almost 5 billion years and just recently landed here. Mysterious Stone Structures in Western Sahara, hundreds of mysterious stone structures were recently discovered. These stone structures date back thousands of years, in a part of the desert that's rarely visited by archaeologists. These structures come in all shapes and sizes, and professionals aren't exactly sure what they were used for or when they were created. For seven years, archaeologists surveyed the landscape in this part of the Western Sahara, using satellite images and physical excavations to make sense of these mysterious things. At this point, they are completely in ruins. There are no giant walls or crumbling houses. These are the remnants of structures, nothing but flat piles of rock showing the outlines of what had once stood here in the desert. Some of them are shaped like crescents, others in almost perfect circles, and others nothing but long lines of rocks that look like they may have once been a border wall. Some are just giant piles of rocks with no visible shape at all. The best guess archaeologists have right now is that these structures were used to mark the locations of graves. They have only managed to actually excavate two of the sites, and they found human remains dating back about 1,500 years. This seems to be direct evidence that there had once been a thriving civilization in what is now a wasteland of rock and sand. The only things remaining of this civilization are what appear to be complicated tombstones, 
with who knows how many bodies lost underneath the surface. It's shout out time! Big thank you to Sylvia the screenwriter and Kylie Schedwell for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to join the Origins Explain family. The Giant Crocodile Paleontologists have discovered the remains of an absolutely terrifying monster buried under the sand of the Sahara. They made the discovery in Tunisia, uncovering an ancient beast that was the size of a bus. The creature they found was once the largest sea-dwelling crocodile to ever patrol the oceans that scientists have ever found. This creature would have been about 30 feet long, weighing over 3 tons. Just the skull of this ancient croc is 5 feet long, which is roughly the size of an average Florida alligator. Just its head is the size of an alligator today. Researchers have named the new species Machimosaurus rex, and it went extinct about 150 million years ago at the end of the Jurassic period. The lead author of the study, Federico Fanti, from the University of Bologna, described the creature as massive. The fossils of the sea monster were found by Fanti and his team, with help from the National Geographic Society Committee for Research and Exploration. The team dug out the bones of a few inches of sediment at the edge of the Sahara. Its skull was so big, it took the paleontologists two days to remove it from the sand. Then they had to go through the long process of removing the entire body. From what they can tell, this particular chunk of the barren desert was once a lagoon connected to the ocean. Researchers also found the fossils of ancient fish and turtles, showing a marsh habitat rich in biodiversity. It's hard to imagine such a thing considering the shape of the desert today, but millions of years ago, this place was part of a hot, swampy jungle. Ancient Alien UFO A UFO has apparently been discovered buried in the desert of Algeria, at least according to Google Earth user Scott Waring. Waring is a well-known conspiracy theorist and often finds mysterious things. He said he found the supposed UFO at the edge of the Sahara as a star-shaped formation. It's a kind of anomaly in the desert that appears to have five points, looks an awful lot like a spaceship, and is currently buried under a mountain of sand. From the satellite images, it looks an awful lot like some kind of artificial object. Scott believes it's been buried under the sand for thousands of years, but according to Google Earth, the object is named H666 and is identified as a normal geological formation near the town of Um El Asel. If you look closely at the images, you can see what almost looks like tunnels leading underneath it. Some have suggested it could be the site of some kind of ancient underground city, secret alien base, a crashed ship that's been covered up by an unknown organization. The possibilities are endless. Or really, it could just all be a coincidence, and the UFO could be nothing but a big rock. What do you think it is? Let me know in the comments. A growing desert. The Sahara is the biggest scorching desert on the planet, and according to scientists, it's actually getting bigger. In a new study, researchers looked at rainfall data gathered from all across Africa. They compared the results to climate records dating back to 1920 to see how the desert has changed. They especially looked at the borders of the desert and how different conditions affected specific regions. What they discovered is that compared to a century ago, the Sahara is 10% bigger. The question isn't what's hidden beneath the Sahara. The real question is what will be buried under the Sahara in the future? Because by the looks of it, a lot of Africa could one day be buried. Here's a fun fact. The scientific definition of a desert is a place that receives less than 10 inches of rainfall per year, and according to the U.S. Geological Survey, it must have a surface area of at least 3.6 million square miles. By definition, the Sahara is actually only the third biggest desert in the world, next to the frozen deserts in Antarctica and the Arctic. Ancient Mystery Structures There is something very large and very mysterious hidden underneath the sand of the Sahara. This mysterious object has been revealed through satellite images, and unlike a lot of these strange things found in the middle of nowhere, it can be seen up close on the ground. From above, it looks like a gigantic eroded pyramid, and from the ground, physically standing in front of it, it looks like it really could have once been a pyramid. Mainstream scientists won't even touch this subject, and that's because there is no actual evidence that Pyramid Mountain, as it's been labeled, is anything but a mountain of rock. The suspected pyramid can be found near the Bahariya Oasis in Egypt's western desert, which is a part of the Sahara. It is taller than the Great Pyramid, and yet it's almost definitely much older. 
It's so eroded that it would have taken thousands upon thousands of years to dissolve in such a way. Another interesting fact about this pyramid-shaped lump of dirt is that there is a very distinct waterline about 50 feet up. Some suggest this waterline is the mark left behind by the Great Flood from the Bible. We can't say for sure whether this mysterious structure is the remnant of a pyramid, one made by an even older civilization than ancient Egypt. But if it turns out to be true, it will change how scientists view and research the history of Egypt and the pyramids. The Lords of the Sahara The ancient Tuaregs have been living in the Sahara Desert for thousands of years. The word Tuareg supposedly has its origins in the Arabic language and can be translated roughly to abandoned by the gods. These ancient desert dwellers saw themselves as a forsaken people, left to fend for themselves in the harsh wasteland of North Africa. But these lords of the Sahara are far from lost, as they are still living in their ancestral lands to this very day. We know that they probably lived in southern Libya in the 5th century based on accounts of the Greek historian Herodotus. And according to the Tuareg's own folklore, their origins can be traced to a legendary queen named Tin Hinan, who lived in the 3rd or 4th century AD. When the 7th century came around, the Tuaregs began migrating southwest, and after 400 years, they arrived in Niger. There, they allegedly founded the ancient stone city of Timbuktu and forced the indigenous tribes southward. In the 14th century, the Tuaregs were converted to Islam, and from their new territory in the south of the Sahara, they became rich by trading gold, salt, and slaves. The 19th century saw the destruction of these people at the hands of the French, and in 1963, they helped in the formation of the country of Mali, and today they are still fighting for their independence. But behind them, all throughout the desert, experts believe traces of their civilization over thousands of years are hiding under the sand, ancient cities and structures that have never been found. The Cave of Swimmers The Cave of Swimmers can be found in the Libyan desert in the mountainous region of the Gilf Kabir Plateau. The cave is fascinating because in 1933, the Hungarian explorer Laszlo Almasi uncovered rock art that has never been explained. Within the cave are Neolithic pictographs and paintings on the rock of people who appear to be swimming. These people have their limbs outstretched as if paddling through the water. The swimmers are accompanied by pictures of giraffes and hippopotamuses, and this is all quite odd considering the location of the cave, about as far away from water as you can get. It's literally in the middle of the desert, far from any swimming holes. The mystery gets even stranger. Researchers believe the paintings date back 10,000 years. It appears to be proof that not that long ago, much of the desert was actually filled with water. These paintings clearly show people swimming, so there must have been a lake or a river nearby. And yet all traces of this watering hole are gone today, along with the mysterious people who left these paintings behind. The Lake Under the Sand Scientists have recently discovered evidence of an enormous prehistoric lake hiding beneath the sand. This mega lake was formed about 250,000 years ago, back when the Nile River flooded the entire eastern Sahara. This major flood created a lake that covered about 42,000 square miles. It reached about 810 feet above sea level and was accompanied by a slightly smaller lake of 18,600 square miles. All across what is today the western desert in Egypt was essentially a great lake. Evidence of this mysterious body of water was found by geologist Ted Maxwell and his colleagues at the National Air and Space Museum. They were looking through radar data of Egypt taken from space when they made the discovery. The radar images were able to pierce the dry desert to look beneath the subsurface. There, they found buried channels about 50 feet deep. To put it as simply as possible, the images worked like x-rays, showing the huge channels and empty basins that are now completely filled with sand. If you were to scoop all the sand out, you would find an empty lake bed. All along the edges of this forgotten lake, Researchers have identified Paleolithic human settlements. These were settlements built by the earliest humans tens of thousands of years ago. They made their homes directly on the shore of this lake. But of course, most of the ruins have long since been swallowed by the desert. The Fanfin Sea Devil The Fanfin Sea Devil is an anglerfish, one of those hideous monsters from the deep that has a long lure hanging in front of its face to trick other creatures into swimming into its mouth. 
But this particular anglerfish lives in the deepest and spookiest depths of the ocean. And for the first time, it's been caught mating on camera. Researchers captured an image of the female sea devil filled with eggs and the parasitic male still attached to her belly. These fish are amazing for just how weird their reproductive system is. The only way anglerfish can reproduce is if the male hunts the female down somewhere in the deep sea, attaches his tiny body onto her, and then fuses himself into her tissue. He slowly becomes absorbed inside, leading to a permanent connection. Even their circulatory systems become interconnected, and the male wastes away to nothing but testes. And while these remarkable creatures have been found in the Mariana Trench, this photo came from around 3,000 feet deep near the Azores in Spain, using a submersible vessel. It was a total fluke and a lucky shot, considering only 14 female specimens have ever been found before. And this was the first time a male fanfin sea devil has ever been seen by humans. The Megalodon? About 3 million years ago, arguably the scariest shark that ever lived went extinct. This was the Megalodon. The shark grew to be around 60 feet long, with a mouth over 10 feet wide and 276 teeth like torture devices for slicing up its prey. Yet even though scientists all agree there are no more giant megalodon sharks living on our planet, that hasn't stopped the rumors and stories. Some believe there could still be one of these giant sharks living at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Just recently, some bizarre footage surfaced online of what appears to be a shark on the ocean floor. Nobody knows exactly where this footage came from, but it shows a truly enormous beast of a shark just kind of swimming around at the bottom of the ocean. It's estimated at 22 feet long, and it has some saying it's proof that there are still prehistoric sharks in the ocean. Shortly after this footage came out, even more footage was captured off the coast of New England, showing a huge, prehistoric-sized shark swimming just beside a research vessel. This footage was caught about 100 miles off the coast of Woods Hole, with the creature looking to be nearly 30 feet long. And while this sparked more rumors that there could be megalodons hiding out in the Mariana Trench, it turned out to be a normal basking shark. Mystery Critters in the 1980s and 1990s, the record-breaking oceanographer and astronaut Kathy Sullivan traveled 250 miles above the Earth and became the first American woman to walk in space. Then, in 2020, at 68 years old, Kathy traveled seven miles down to the deepest part of the ocean. She went to the bottom of the Mariana Trench, a journey of over 12 hours. The trench is between Hawaii and the Philippines, a massive crescent-shaped gully carved out of the ocean floor. And while we aren't sure how many large creatures live there, Kathy saw a variety of small, mysterious critters living in the sediment. According to what Kathy told the Marine Technology Society after she was back on land, the bottom of the Mariana Trench was made up of extremely fine silt and was overflowing with small, burrowing critters like you might find in a big pile of dirt. She couldn't identify these creatures, but could plainly see them squirming around like underwater bugs. She also saw some sea cucumbers and some tracks left in the dirt from where something had crawled across the bottom. Thanks to Kathy, we now know that even at the deepest point, there are plenty of unknown life forms wriggling and burrowing around. We don't know exactly what they are, and they aren't much bigger than worms, but they seem to thrive deep in the Mariana Trench. The Snailfish there is one fish that lives in the Mariana Trench deeper than any other. It's kind of pink, a little slippery, and it looks like a giant tadpole that never turned into a frog. It's located roughly 21,000 feet beneath the surface of the ocean and is perfectly content in a world of utter darkness, where the pressure is so strong that it reaches over 1,000 times more than what's at sea level. That tightening feeling you get when you dive a few feet into the water, it's like that pressure, only 1,000 times stronger. That's enough to crush your body into jelly. This is the snailfish, or the Mariana snailfish to be exact, and it's the top predator in the greatest trench on Earth. A team of Chinese researchers recently scored some specimens from about 23,000 feet below sea level, then used them to examine the anatomy of these fascinating marine animals. Researchers found many strange things about the creature's structure. Kan Wang from Northwestern Polytechnical University says the fish have gaps in their skulls. 
These gaps probably work like pressure relief valves to balance their insides with their outsides, keeping them from getting crushed. Even more interesting is that their frames aren't entirely made of bone, but are mostly cartilage. The fish have evolved a mutation in the gene responsible for forming bones, causing them to be partially non-functional. This allows their bones to become more flexible, so they don't get crushed by the severe pressure down in the trench. It's shout out time! Big thank you to Iron and All About the Goal for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about amazing discoveries. Living Viruses In a shocking first, researchers have retrieved living viruses from the deepest point in the Mariana Trench. The team from Shanghai identified several giant viral species, including something called a mimivirus, which uses amoeba as its host. These viruses were all taken out of the seabed about 36,000 feet below sea level. What's really interesting is that while giant viruses have been found in all kinds of other places in the ocean, they appear to be significantly more abundant the deeper you go. Mimiviruses, which make up roughly 4% of the viral population in the seabed, were originally mistaken for bacteria when scientists identified them during a serious pneumonia outbreak in 1992. This is because the viruses are so big and have such giant hairy fibers that they can even be visible sometimes to the naked eye. These are viruses you can actually see, like little spots of dust. To give you an example, a giant mimivirus has about 1.2 million base pairs in its genome, which makes its genetic sequence 40 times longer than the novel coronavirus. And while there is no evidence that these viruses found in the Mariana Trench can cause any damage to humans, researchers say they have been known to seriously harm tissue in other mammals. The Red Jelly The benthocodon can simply be called the Red Jelly of the Mariana Trench, and scientists know almost nothing about the creature. This thing is tiny, almost impossible to spot, and a dark, deep shade of red. They can be found only near the sea floor, but are so elusive that scientists haven't really studied them much. They know there are two distinct species, and also that the red jelly doesn't have any good ways to move around. It can't really propel itself in one direction or another. Instead, it has to spend its entire life in the water column, being pushed around by currents. Because of this, they can be found in the deepest parts of the ocean, all the way from Antarctica to California, in the Arctic, and even down in the dark of the Great Mariana Trench. The Forehead Fish In 2020, new footage appeared of an extremely unusual deep-sea fish. Unlike most creatures, this fish doesn't see out of a pair of eyeballs on its head. It sees the world through its translucent forehead. The footage was caught tens of thousands of feet beneath the surface off the coast of California, over 2,000 feet down in Monterey Bay. It's such a rare thing to see the forehead fish, or the barrel eye fish, that it's only been seen nine times by researchers. This is despite the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute going on over 5,600 dives in search of it. That's a pretty small success rate just for trying to take some pictures of a weird fish. And although the footage was captured in Monterey Bay, we know the fish has a wide range of habitats across the ocean, all the way to Asia, and way down into the Mariana Trench. But let's look at what makes this creepy fish so weird. The fish's head is protected by a clear shield that's filled with what looks like gelatinous fluid. Its eyeballs are in the shapes of barrels and are hidden behind its fluid-filled shield. When the lights of the submersible vehicle hit the fish, its eyes glowed bright green like shiny marbles. Researchers say the fish can orient its eyes in whichever direction it wants, even looking straight up through the top of its head toward the surface. But the actual anatomy of the fish is still a mystery to scientists. According to Bruce Robinson, one of the senior researchers involved in tracking down the barrel eye fish, they do not know about its population size. They mostly think the fish just glides through the water, waiting for something to get close enough to its mouth to eat. The Dragonfish the terrifying dragonfish is one of the most incredible animals you may have never heard of. It looks like a terrifying deep-sea dragon. It has huge white fangs it uses to rip apart its prey, along with a shiny red body looking like some kind of bloody worm. But even though it looks frightening, its biology is incredible. The dragonfish are the only fish in the ocean that can both generate and see red light. 
The fish generates its own kind of red glow, like a search beam through the water which it uses to detect prey. And since the prey can't see the red color of the light, nor the red color of the dragonfish's body, it's invisible to everything else in the ocean. This unique skill has made them pretty much untouchable, like living ghosts. The chances of seeing a dragonfish are extremely slim, seeing as they live about 6,000 feet or more below the surface in the Bathyal zone. This is where a very tiny bit of sunlight breaches the water, so little that it's nearly total darkness. Because of this, the creatures down here have all developed their own form of bioluminescence. The dragonfish is unique because it gives off its own color that other creatures can't see. It's amazing that the fish evolved to glow red, seeing as that's the color at the lowest end of the spectrum that can shine through water. For example, blue light can penetrate the most amount of water, therefore it works best in the blue ocean, but red is the opposite barely able to breach the surface. So when the dragonfish glows red way down at the bottom, it looks like a burning ball of fire in the darkness. Only the other fish can't see it. Vampire Squid The vampire squid is not a vampire, nor a squid, nor an octopus. Instead, the vampire squid is its very own unique animal that scientists have separated into a distinct group. It has eight arms and two tentacles, but it's not technically a squid. It also doesn't slurp blood, although it wears a cape. The dark red skin which connects its arms looks like a vampire's cape, sticking out rigidly because of the large spines underneath its arms. But this creepy critter, which has visited the Mariana Trench, isn't even a predator. It instead eats nothing but food particles that it catches on its sticky arms. Any kind of excess organic matter that's floating through the ocean all gets stuck to its tentacles, which it then eats for dinner. Also, unlike a genuine squid, the vampire squid does not shoot black ink into the water to escape danger. Because it lives in such a deep part of the ocean, black ink wouldn't do anything. It would be invisible. So this unique animal had to evolve its own defensive strategy. Instead of black ink, the vampire squid squirts a colorless substance filled with bioluminescent particles. It shoots twinkling stardust out like an underwater glitter bomb. All those twinkling lights confuse predators and allow the vampire squid to get away. The Flying Saucer Jellyfish Researchers with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration have just discovered a never-before-seen creature while exploring the depths of the Mariana Trench. They came across an underwater animal that can only be described as a flying saucer jellyfish. The scientists who were surveying the area using an underwater research vessel were shocked to see a jellyfish with bright pink tentacles and a bright red and yellow bulb. It looks like a miniature spaceship gliding through the water. They were even more surprised to learn that nobody else had ever seen such a jellyfish before. That's probably because it lives almost two and a half miles underneath the surface of the ocean. And since the researchers only got a glimpse, scientists don't really know anything about it. They think it probably uses its tentacles like a dragnet to snag unsuspecting prey. But really, it just looks like one big intergalactic monster floating listlessly through the ocean. What's your favorite creepy creature from the deep sea? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon.